If you'd like to sponsor a TSP television broadcast, we've got a Patreon page for that. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSP television and make a pledge for premier Twin City sports coverage. I'm Jessica January, joined by Don Ackerman. We're here at the University of St. Thomas as the Blaine Bengals take on the Creighton Dermon Hall Raiders. It's a beautiful night for football. We've got the cool, perfect autumn weather for some football, and then we've got two teams that are going to try to knock each other off. We've got a struggle going on in high school football right now. The top team keeps falling down to other teams, so let's see what happens tonight as these two face off. for the Bengals are number two, Tim Moffey, number 12, Jack Herring, number 22, Jason Call, number 34, Tony Strand, and number 50, Tyler Strand. Coaches for Blade are Doug Maruth, Matt Smoot, Brett Tyson, Rick Swanson, Mike Law, Wes Satzinger, Rob Nick, Steve Geider, Rick, Nick Rusin, Christian Wade, Ryan in? Erlinson, and head coach Ben oh, okay. Geisler. Okay. And now let's hear it for your Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. Captains for the Raiders are number four, Rajiv Red, number five, Abe Schwinn, number 13, Danny Callahan, and number 68, Sam Harris. Coaches for Creighton Aram Hall are Jake Kiefer, Harry Wolf, Jim Radford, Steve Zahn, Bill Hennessy, Joan Cleason, Tommy Johnson, Vic Adam Lee. So we are about two minutes from the start of this game. As we talked about earlier, it's Creighton Derman Hall against the Blaine Bengals. Right now they're doing announcements right now. And we'll get started in about a couple is minutes. Umpire is Justin Jaraki, head linesman Steve Wolben, line judge Phil Worm, and back judge Gordy Hansen. Blaine won the toss and has deferred. They will kick while defending the north end zone. CDH will receive defending the south end zone. Heading into tonight's game, Blaine's record is 2-0 in the Metro North Division and 3-0 overall. Creedendale Paul's record is 1-1 in the Metro East and 2-1 overall. It's now time for the kickoff weather report brought to you by the CARE 11 weather team and meteorologist Laura Becker. Current temperature is 57 degrees. The relative humidity is 53%. So with Creighton Durham Hall's record of 2-1, and one, last week they dropped a game against Woodbury, which was a really devastating loss for them as they're obviously a highly ranked team. What do you think their mindset is coming into this game after dropping a game like that? You know, I don't really know what 
you know would cause them to be upset by Wood Woodbury, but it definitely puts a focus back on on the game that they're playing this week. And you know, I almost feel bad in a way for for Blaine because there's there's no way that you're going to get any sleep and, and they're going to be very fired up today. Uh, it's it's a big deal to to win these games, and now they're at home. They've got the home crowd behind them here. Um, I see the Bengals have brought quite a bit of fans too, so we're getting ready to kick off, and I expect to see some high energy game right now, and that's exciting for me. And it will be an interesting one for sure. As we talked about earlier, both teams are known for their football programs. They're both ranked and really good teams, especially Blaine, they're 3-0. They started off the season tremendously. They beat St. Michael, they beat Stillwater, and they had a huge win against Osseo last week. So like you talked about the energy for Creighton Durham Hall, I'm expecting to see the same thing with Blaine. And here we go, we're underway for this matchup against Lane and Creighton Durham Hall. Just caught there on the 10 yard line. There you go, <laughs> right out of the back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lane not giving them much leeway there. Nope. Missile wide of blown, but we were gonna make sure he goes backwards. That's a good sign for an exciting game. With the kick return, it's a 10 yard return, it'll be first and 10 for the Raiders at their own 20. But they gave him the spot at the 20, so we got first down and 10 yards to go. And it looks like for Creighton, we have number three, Peter Udobuk, running the ball. And I think if you watch the line shift before the game, they were kind of in a way tipping their hand that they were going to run that sweep. So Blaine wasn't really surprised by that. Very short gain, if anything. Oh, looks like a loss, actually. So they actually lost the yard on that play. And Udobak, who is a senior, is actually a commit to Minnesota Gophers. So obviously having that D1 talent on the opposite side for Blaine, they know to watch out for him for sure. Oh, there we go. A nice pass by Callahan. So it looked like they had a, pretty much a one wide out on the right, and he cut the ball to, to get a gain there, making up for that first down. Very nice third and three. Really good recovery after that first down that where the Bengals had sniffed out what was happening. Yeah, Creighton playing with good poise and a good start for this game. A throw What's there. Oh, oh, an interception by Blaine. Intercepted. I couldn't tell if that was tipped before it got. I think it was tipped I first. I think so too, yeah. Definitely tipped and then caught by number seven, Gurley. Aggressive quarterbacking, trying to throw it between two defenders. One tips it to the other. Good teamwork there. Now the Bengals get a short field. This cannot be what the Raiders wanted to see happen <laughs> at the beginning of their drive here. Yeah, we talked about their first two possessions and how they were kind of feeling it out and recovered after that short run and then you make a risky throw like that. Blaine there for the recovery. Number 12, Jack Haring. Off to number five, Brandon Wooding. We'll have a first down. Lots of space to the left there. I think the Raiders might have to press a little bit more here if they really want to, if they want to put some pressure on the Bengals. One exactly. Play and it was one play and it looked wide open. And over the past three games that have for the Blaine Raiders, their connections have been really well. As we see number 12, Herring with the run. Two for two so far. Making that short field work for him really quickly. One pass, one run, and two first downs. Blaine definitely within scoring range. This is hiked back to Herring again, and he'll finish it into the end zone. Wow. First touchdown for the Blaine Raiders. Nice drive for the quarterback. 
One pass and two runs, and he's got a touchdown on his belt. Excuse me, I meant the Blaine Bengals. <laughs> So only a couple minutes into the game, and Blaine has already scored their first touchdown. And they made it look pretty easy. And the one point conversion will count. Good job by that young kid in the background catching that, uh, that point <laughs> after touchdown. Hey, if you're going to be back there, right? Yeah, exactly. Might as well do something about it. Okay, now we got now we got some talking going on. Span section looks like they're going with some kind of uh, <laughs> 70s theme. Yeah, and I'm I seeing a lot of tie-dye shirts and yeah. peace sign earrings. <laughs> and so far, they're doing better than well. Actually, I think I saw a lot of PJs and pajamas. I don't know if they were doing some kind of peace. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's a good night to do it. It's unfortunately it, it's reflected in a way. The Raiders are kind of falling asleep here. Now, right. With yeah. Your first drive. That's a good point. <laughs> so, that's not what you want. Now this is their chance to kind of wake up. Hope the alarm clock. Get the coffee kicking. Let's go. Let's get some Gatorade in us and. <laughs> we need to equalize this here. Yeah, it definitely doesn't help that the interception happened on the 30-yard line where they're already close to scoring on the other side. So Blaine will kick off. Oh, no. And a drop there, but recovered. Oh, another drop. The ball is fumbled and recovered. And it looks like it was recovered by Blaine. Oh, my gosh. This, this really is not going their way. Wow, just so at first it looked like there was a fumble or, okay. you know, the drop ball he by... He it, yep. Picked it up and then got it knocked loose again. Wow. Blaine just all over everything right now in this game. They look like they, they have all the energy and they're the ones that are attacking in this game. They're fired up right now. At least hold to a field goal here. I need to see some energy on the sidelines. We need to start jumping. Let's go. Looks like the same play that, and touchdown for Blaine. Almost the same exact setup and play before the first touchdown. Just going in the opposite direction. <laughs> and they complete it again. So at this point, Blaine's got everything going their way. They, they gave up one one nice nice play, but other than that, they've had four great plays of their own, two touchdowns, an interception, and a fumble recovery. And the first touchdown was scored at 10-20, and now it's 10-28, and they scored another one. Blaine will attempt the kick for the one point. And it's good. I am somewhat flabbergasted. I was not expecting anything like this. I was expecting a little bit of a fight here. And okay, now the Raiders need to need to step it up here and show what a Raider can do. And it is surprising, as we talked about before the game started, when you have Creighton Durham Hall who's coming off of a loss by Woodbury, and you think they would have came out sharp, energized, and ready to go. And already we've seen two terrible mistakes that have cost them two touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, maybe the quarterback was trying to thread the needle a little bit, so I'll, I'll give him a break on that, trying to make a play. But but that fumble recovery, unfortunately, I guess if he dropped the ball, I don't know what to say. That definitely can't happen again. Especially when no one was on him at first, right? So that just seems like it's a loss of focus. Yeah, so now, now, now is the chance to turn this around. So we'll have Blaine kicking off again. For the, for the third time. <laughs> and we'll see if Creighton can make a clean catch and get some momentum here. That was number 40, Greenberg. It's caught there by Creighton. He finds a gap in the middle, but it's taken down for their first down. All right. That is. So a positive sign there. They caught the ball. They got a good run. <laughs> and now they're the furthest down the field they've been so exactly, far. Exactly, exactly. Best, best possession, best uh, location for a drive starter. 
In this game, it is a long one, so it's okay that they've made some mis mistakes now. They're obviously a really good team. They're ranked for a reason. Yes. So it'll be good to see them turn it around. Nets pitch back to Callahan, who completes the pass. It's going to be a short second down. This will give them options. This is the kind of play where if it's me, I kind of think maybe I'll run one, throw one down the field a little bit. I got second and short. I still got third in my back pocket. I might see what I could do here. And he has the arm to do it. In the previous games, Callahan has been known to make more of an aerial attack. So we'll see what he's got this play. Look at defense is way back on the line. Oh. And it's hiked and it's caught by Udoko. Well, I can't fault him for that. Take the gimme. Get a first down. But the defense was backed way up and really I think they were expecting the same thing I was talking about. They had both of their wide out both wideouts had a lot of room to maneuver. Both of them could have got a first down really easy without any contended any contention from the defense. And that's what you want to see. Even though they're down by two touchdowns, you don't want them to try to force anything. So it's a long game. Slowly make your way and complete passes. And that was ran by Tony Underwood. Beautiful run. Right up the middle. Just keep momentum. Quarterbacks looking in to see what we're going to do next. Creighton looks like they're settling in a little bit more. Bengals must be just hungry, hoping they can just pounce. So Creighton Durham Hall has to be real careful not to not to give them a third opportunity. Hug back to Callahan again, who's passed off to Underwood, who runs it down for a first down. Nice carry there by Underwood. Two good possessions back to back there for Underwood. Yep. Driving down the field, really nice. Great way to put in to put that previous possession in their in their rear view mirror. Absolutely. Football is just as much about physicality as it is about mentality. Callahan again to Underwood for the third time. And he'll continue running down the sideline and is taken down. He gets to about the 15. So great run there by Underwood. Yeah, what I like about that play too is the quarterback had like a really good fake. So it looks like they could almost set up that same play where he keeps the ball. So the defense has to watch out for that because they were watching for it there and, and uh, they got beat up for another first down. I also like how they're continuing to go to Underwood, right? Why change something when it's working? They've had three straight possessions where he's carried it well, so hopefully they'll continue doing that. Right back to Callahan, who fakes the pass and completes it to number three, Udoku, who drops it. What do, what do we got here? Who I think recovers it. What seemed like was going to be a touchdown. He dropped a pass. Now it's a touchback. Oh, wow. So, so in a way, even that didn't. Oh, wait. Are they going to give him? Are they giving him the ball? OK, so a touchback means the ball comes out. So instead of instead of the instead of Blaine getting the ball, maybe right within the five yard line, it goes into the end zone. And instead of a touchdown, the Raiders end up giving up the ball, and now they, the other team gets it out of the 20. Wow. An unfortunate mishap right there. That looked like that was going to be a touchdown for sure. Or at least setting up for a nice short maybe run for Underwood. Exactly. And that's the second time that Callahan has thrown, and it's been unsuccessful. A nice carry there by Herring. Blaine again on the offensive end on their way to attempting another touchdown. Hike back to Herring, who hands it off to number two, Tim Maffey. 
All right, so good defense there. They got four yards in the first down, kind of stopped the second. Now it's third down. Raiders need to hold here. Blaine hasn't had to do much this game yet to use their offensive potency because they've played defense well. So we'll see what they do on these next possessions. Back to Herring, who steps back and launches one long, and it is completed. Bobbled, but he kept it. Caught by number 83, Downey. Perfect pass there by Herring. He stepped back and launched it and fell right into the hands of Downey. Yeah, he went and got it. He bobbled it, but he was able to recover and hold on to it when the defender hit him. He, they're back in the shotgun again. And it looks like just the chemistry between Blaine is on point tonight. Whether they're running it or Herring's taking it himself like this. Unfortunately tackled that time, but <laughs> previous ones. I was going to say, the Raiders need to build on every play like that, get hyped up, and not let this not let this thing down. Still here we go. Second down. Got the refs blowing a whistle here. I guess I'm giving someone a friendly reminder that they need to leave. <laughs> Some substitution being made here. But still, Blaine up 14 to 0 in the first quarter with still 6.19 left. Herring has been phenomenal so far as he has the ball again, decides to take it himself. It completes the run. Nice fake and then a juke to the right. Gets the first down, moving the chains. Herring is doing it on all sides of the bar right now, whether he's passing, handing it off, or taking it himself. He looks great. The Bengals are showing that they are for real, that the 3-0 is by no means any type of misconception. Ball run again, but taken down short there. Number two, Mafi with the carry. Tackles made by number 11, that's Stuka. Two yard game. Second and seven at the 11. Lane set up at the 11 yard line. With four wide receivers. In case see if they throw or still run it. They're still looking to run. He takes it himself again. So Blaine spread in the field out with all those wide receivers and then just basically going to run the quarterback sneak. Yeah, and why not? It's been working so far. Yes, it has. Yeah, the Raiders need to stop that. Otherwise, this game is going to get out of hand if it doesn't already. Oh, there we go. That's a break the Raiders wanted. Third and nine. Something the Bengals have shown they can handle, but it's a chance for the Raiders to stop them. Hopefully they can take that gift of five yards and make it work to their advantage. Exactly, anything they can take. Hike back to Herring, who completes the pass for a touchdown. Single coverage. <laughs> Single coverage, a great throw. Now it's completed by Call. So just a great pass by Herring. Yeah, right on the money. Took total advantage of the one-on-one -on -one out there. The defender was kind of basically out of position when the ball went to the outside. And easy touchdown. I kind of want to look at my look at the calendar and say Sunday, Friday at 13th because the Raiders <laughs> are having a nightmare. This is not going their way. You know, Blaine will get the one point. That was good by Greenberg, who's already kicked three of those. <laughs> Still four minutes left in this game, and Blaine is up 21 to zero. If, if you had 21 zip in the first quarter, I please put that in the comments because I'd like to know who saw this coming because I certainly am completely surprised by this. 
I had no idea this was going to happen. And that was a really, in a way, devastating because that was an 80 yard drive. Exactly. After, after you drove down the field and gave it up. So coaches really need to see if they can get these guys fired up. Get some good talking to. We've got some, got Coach Young over here on the left. <laughs> And again, Queen Durham Hall isn't making Blaine earn these points. So besides the last throw, which obviously was a great connection between those two, they have an interception, and then there was a loss of focus with dropping the ball basically in the end zone, and then another drop over there. So it seems like if they can just pick up their mental focus, they might have a chance to get back in this game. Yeah, we're going to have to see the defense turn things around. The offense made their mistakes, but the defense has to really – make them not get such a great reward for it. Oh, that might help. That's, that's helpful, the ball goes out of bounds. That'll give the Raiders good field possession. Greenberg might be tired from kicking so much already this game. <laughs> he's, he's not used to this much kicking. When's halftime? I need a break. <laughs> Yeah, he's getting some good exercise in. He's getting his <laughs> fitness level up. I guess it's a good reason to be tired, though. <laughs> yeah, see, this brings him up to 35, so that's a great place to start. Second time they've gotten the ball pretty far up, so they need to make another drive, and this time finish it and put it in the end zone. And Creighton's been successful with running the ball. And a great pass there. Oh, that might be it. And that's you, Dopebach. Oh, trips him up. On the sideline. I think he got the top of his sneakers there with a dive. Great tackle. Yeah, he wanted that one. I really thought one. he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> a nice pass there, completed pass there by Callahan. Well, I know I can hear the fans around us are fired up. They love to see that. They're excited. I can see a little bit of little bit of bebopping maybe on the <laughs> sideline. In the purple, so they need to get this touchdown and get fired up. Coaches need to keep them talk, keep talking to them. This game's not over. Callahan again. Pitched and ran to Underwood. So Underwood and Udobak have been the two most successful so far on Creighton. So if I'm Callahan, you're trying to figure out a way to get those two guys going. The one thing I saw in that play defensively is even though he faked the handoff, two defenders went with the quarterback. So if that is going to be a trick play they're doing later, I don't think it's going to work because the, the Bengals are on top of it. So kudos to that defense. I mean, they're they're they they still got a hold here, but they're 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 in the right spots. So I think that's that's good for them and uh, not good for the Raiders. Oh, here we got a timeout. And Blaine is going to have to continue being on top of it. They know Creighton is a good team, although they're up pretty big early. They understand the team that they're playing against and that they yeah. have to focus the entire game. Yeah, two plays ago, that guy was gone. I think I think he barely clipped his toe just to get him to get to get the tackle. And I like this timeout by the Raiders coach. If you think you don't see what you like, you really want this touchdown. It's worth the timeout. Let's talk about it. Get this focus on. Get the right play in. And let's let's get this in the end zone. We need some points on the board. So as a football player, or if, if we're talking about Creighton, how do you mentally stay focused? So you've had a couple you know, fumbles. An interception, obviously. How do you overcome that mental state? I would expect the coaches to stay confident and stay calm. Don't show any type of doubt. I would tell some of your key guys, some of your captains, hey guys, let's fire up for this. We need to get excited. And then definitely don't show any disappointment, but like just say, okay guys, we can get some points here. It's no big deal. We know we can score points. Let's get seven, and we'll just build on that. And if you're talking to the defense, you guys got to, you know, fire up. Gets, you know, let's knock the ball loose. Let's get a pick ourselves. Let's do what they did. Let's do exactly. to them what they did to us. Exactly. Let's get a couple turnovers. Hike back to Halligan. Callig excuse me. Callahan again. Oh my gosh. And Blaine. So the defense sniffed out that play. Quarterback decides it to kind of pitch it forward. I'll make something out of nothing because I'm going nowhere here. I don't want to give up the sack. And instead, he gives up the ball. That 
Wow, th this is definitely Friday the 13th as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> this, this is not going well. Oh my gosh, I look down for one second and <laughs> I look back up and Blaine has the ball again. <laughs> oh my goodness. It, kind of an ill-advised throw there, but I think really what happened was the quarterback just, he felt stuck, wanted to make something happen. And that's maybe where you should calm down, take the sack, another play, we'll build on it. Instead, you give the ball to the other team and now they're gonna, they're looking to just keep going. Yeah, another turnover, turnover there gives Blaine the ball back on offense. And they'll hike it back to Herring, who pitched it to- That's good. Number five, Whitting. I think that was a flea flicker. I think I think the running back was going to flip it back to the quarterback for a pass, but the defense was all over it. That's a great play to start off right here for the Raiders. Great play. And that's where they're going to have to make up this ground. They have to prevent Blaine from doing whatever they want. Doing anything they exactly. want. <laughs> Herring steps back. The long throw there. Incomplete pass. 83 was open down the field. He was going for that sideline route. That just shows you the Bengals. They want. They're, they're going to keep going for blood. They were ready to just go through the deep ball again. And just say we're just going to we're just going to pound this into you. <laughs> yeah, and the Raiders have allowed them to feel that confidence. That is true. Yeah, that's a good point. But not having that succeed should be bolstering for the defense. They just need one more stop here, and then they can get the ball back. Get the ball back for your offense. Do them a favor. Looks like they're changing up the play. Ball's hiked back again to Herring, who steps back. And a short, complete pass there. And it's Something ran under, by number nine. He got the first down. Fredrickson. Oh, flags deep. That's going to be holding. Yep. So that's one way to get more time for your quarterback. That is a huge break for the Raiders. Give up a nice little screen there. Now it comes <laughs> back. It's going to be third and very long. And the first down does not happen. Yeah, and it looked like for the first time on that play, Herring felt some pressure there. Yes. And although he, Fredrickson was wide open, he still had to get it out of his hands pretty quick. Yeah, and, and apparently, according to one of the refs, he had a little bit of help <laughs> <laughs> by himself some time. Yep. <laughs> so defense knows where they need to go, so be ready. Third down here, and it's ran by Fredrickson again. Who makes a good carry, but is down before the 30-yard line. Yeah, defense can give that up. They're not even at the original line of scrimmage. Now they can get their offense back the ball. Key here is make sure that whoever you have catching this punt is someone who will catch it. Tell him, we know you will catch it, and then see him catch it. <laughs> exactly. And it's kicked off there. It looks like there's a flag on the play. The ball will land just short of the 45 yard line. Which way is this going? I definitely had moving. I'm just not sure which side. Yeah, it looks like one of Creighton's players is hobbling off. Not sure if he was involved in it or not. Okay. So good. That, that allows that allows the Raiders to ask for another kick. They're going to accept that and back them up. So I think on that last play, Blaine. Sh well, wait. Did they decline it? Oh, they declined it. They said, you know what? We kind of we, we'll take the ball up here. Well, that's interesting. I guess. Based on what's happened so far, don't make anybody redo anything. Just take what you can get, line up, let's go. So right here, that was pretty fun to see. Raiders were ready, ready to roll. They lined up, the ref had to stop them. They ran up to the ball and he said, okay, now, now you can go. Oh, 
All right, so Callahan had it. Short little run. He's coming to the sideline. Second down. Get some additional advice there before they run the second down. Second and long. So my goal here is maybe get half of get half that. I don't know if they're feeling like they want to go down the field or not. You said they like to throw the ball, so let's see if they do. Let's see how much they do. Well, when you have a you know D1 level talent as your wide receiver, you got to try to get him some touches. Oh, and then incomplete pass there, but it was right there. It hit him right in his hands. Yeah, and it bounced off where the defender actually had a decent shot at it. It just seems like I'm not sure if there's some chemistry or maybe there's some nerves in this game, but it seems like a majority of the players who have been on offense so far for Creighton are not locked in mentally. And, the, and right there you saw the, the playing defense. They're right there again. Right there, the ball pops loose. They're ready to get it. They're also ready to tackle the guy if he caught it. He was open. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just Blaine's defensive pressure. <laughs> that's always a, you know, something that's difficult to play against as well. Oh. Callahan steps back and completes a pass to Underwood. He was clobbered. And makes it to the 40 yard. Wow. He had about five guys on him. <laughs> so we got a fourth and one here. Can't imagine they're going to punt this. They're definitely going for it. Underwood has been unstoppable. Well, his Whenever quarterback took a big lick there, so he did him right by getting nine yeah. yards. <laughs> yeah, whenever Creighton actually has a chance to be on offense, he's been successful running the ball. Looks like they're calling an audible here. Oh, now we have a we're gonna have a delay of game here. Or did he call timeout in time? He called timeout. It was dodged the, dodged the delay of game by <laughs> I think he probably called that at the same exact time. Yeah, some confusion there on the field. So if you're Creighton, if you're the coach of the team, what do you do to try to make sure that you get this first down the next play? <laughs> I think on that last play he was calling something else. He he must have saw something in the formation that he wanted to take advantage of. They just didn't hike the ball in time. Losing a couple yards here, well, taking the timeout means you, you really still have a fourth and one. So that's something you can accomplish here. So a fourth and two, maybe one or two, somewhere in between there. You can get that, especially with Underwood. Right. We have about 13 seconds left in this quarter. Blaine is up 21 to zero. Creighton still yet to score. Maybe they try to pull something together in these last couple of seconds of the quarter. My guess is you just put in your big guys and you just run it down. <laughs> Get that first down and then yep. and then put that put that D1 talent to use and fling it afterwards. We get the first down first. You exactly. cannot give the ball up here. And hopefully they try to finish this quarter with some sort of momentum. Right? It's only the first quarter. They still have the rest of the game to play. So if you can end with some sort of momentum, some sort of positive vibes, that might help you the rest of the game. There's a chance. Hike back to Callahan. We'll step back. Complete pass, caught there. Woo. That was completed by 87 Burke. That was exciting, good first down. <laughs> yeah, something they needed, for sure. It's gutsy to throw it, though. Looks like they're going to run the, run the rest of the quarter out here. Celebrate the first down. But really, the Bengals have a lot to celebrate in that first quarter. Creighton Durham Hall needs to come down, score here in the second, and then have their defense hold again like they did before, force the Bengals to punt a couple times so they can get back into this game. And usually, when you're playing sports, and obviously specifically football, when you're going into the next quarter and you're the coach and you're trying to rally your guys, you talk about how can you improve in the next quarter to be more successful in the game. But if I'm the coach of Creighton Durham Hall, I think we're just looking at ourselves. I think we're looking at the mistakes that we've made and how I think they've dug themselves in a hole by what they've done. Right. Blaine hasn't had to work too hard in terms of setting up and completing their plays. 
they've just scored basically off the mistakes of Crane Durham Hall. Right. Yeah, if you imagine they can get that other touchdown, then instead of 21 0, it could be 21 7. They could be driving down to make it 21 14. Exactly. That's what you tell your team hey, we could add seven already. This could be for 14. Mm -hmm. We could be one touchdown down, and we've made, we've had four turnovers, and we've overcome that. So I think that's what you tell your players. You remind them of that, and you just tell them to focus, calm down, let's get this. And now, on Crane, defense, I want them fired up. For sure, exactly. <laughs> I want my offensive guys <laughs> calm, my defensive guys fired up. Exactly. Now, Creighton is a team who reached the semifinals last season. And so having that success with the previous team and then coming in a new season, how do you think that impacts new players, but then you know the returning players in terms of having a fresh start but still wanting to have that same success? Just expect greatness. There we go, Underwood's. Ooh. Gets a couple yards. Two yards is something, but I don't think that's really what they want. But it was a quick call. They're driving down the field here. Let's see if they're going to get into passing mode. Callahan with the ball, steps back. An in incomplete pass there. He caught it, but he was knocked loose by the defender. Really, another thing there, Blaine's all over everything. They're giving the quarterback pressure. The guy that they threw it to was covered. They knocked the ball down to cause an incompletion. Really, everything's rolling their way right now. Still, Creighton Durham Hall yet to score a touchdown here, looking for their first scoring. Callahan again, hands off. And then his run by number seven, Zion Guerra. A nice run there, some good momentum for Creighton, who hasn't been very successful throwing the ball, so maybe they're gonna utilize their runs a little bit more. Might be a point where you need to establish the run and then work yourself into the pass because the defense has been all over the passing wise. You've had some seams, but you really can't afford anything bad to happen there in the passing game. So I, I'm, I agree with you. Let's let's run the ball here. Let's put Underwood to use. Let's let's see everybody running the ball and get get down the field and get a touchdown. Callahan again fakes the pass. Some pressure there and launches it to the corner, but knocked away by Blaine. Basically floated. The the, the defender just took his time to ran over there and was able to knock it loose while while he waited for the ball to come to him. And that was intended to number three, Udopa. I'd love to see some zip when he throws that ball instead of like that lob. That lob just gives the defender time to get under it. It's almost the same in basketball. You don't want those lob passes. Exactly. Those lob passes give the defense time to react. You want to you want to get it in there quickly so that you can execute. And I'm not sure if his original pass was intended to be that high arcing, but he did have some pressure coming at him, which may have altered the way he threw it. Yeah, that's true. Needless to say, Blaine's defense has been really, really good All this over entire it. game. All over <laughs> it, yes. Really making him work for everything. Pitch back again to number seven, Zion. See here, they're waiting for him. They were waiting for him to get that ball. That might be a point where maybe you do want to try bootleg or something, because I, I don't really know what you're going to do against this playing defense that has basically been on top of everything you're doing. Exactly. I mean, the only time they got the one deep ball, they've had a couple guys get to the outside. So that's been successful. So maybe you want to try to emulate that. But anything between the between the hash marks has not been successful for Creedmoor Hall. Not on a consistent level. I guess they've had one or two plays, but. Exactly. Pitch back again to Callahan, who was chased down and sacked, taken down by Blaine. He's got to get rid of that ball quickly. And we've seen in the previous possessions, he's been close with that pressure. 
and this time they actually take him down. This is a tough spot because now it's fourth down. I don't think you're in field goal range. I don't really know if the kicker that well to find out if he's that good. Maybe he is. You don't want to punt. Well, looks like they sub Underwood back in, so maybe they're going to try to go to him. Yep. Looks like they've got yeah, two wide outs. Back to Callahan. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. I was not expecting that. Stop it before it gets in there. That's good. That's good. That was a well executed play. Good teamwork there. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Great play. Really worked out. Now this creates a deep and I think it, 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 yeah, excuse me. That creates an opportunity for your defense to create some offense here. They can get themselves a sack, get a safety, something like that would be a great momentum mover for them and finally get themselves on the board. Right, they're gonna have to start making Blaine work for their points and make them earn it. Pinning them deep is a good way to start. That's good, look at that energy. I love to see that energy. As Blaine tried to run it, obviously it was unsuccessful, but like you said, that was really good energy there from Creighton. We haven't seen that all game. I know fans, fans want, the, the, the Raider fans want a safety so bad right now. <laughs> the Bengals know that, so they need to make sure that doesn't happen. Oh! Like back to Herring, who hands it off. He gets a couple yards, which is actually a win after that last play. I thought he had some guys, some defenders around him in the end zone, but he was able to, he was able to shimmy and go. Defense has to hold here. Sounds like we've said that before. <laughs> Third down here. Back to Herring who hands it off again. A nice carry by number nine, there. Fredrickson. Tripped up there, which is a great, great result for the Raiders. Three and, yeah, exactly. Another three and out is exactly what they wanted. Took a while for the uh, kicking team to get on the field. I don't know if they just want to eat clock or uh, what there, but I think it was pretty obvious that was a fourth down. So now you got your now you got your uh, kick returner at the 40 yard line. So that's going to be some good field position. Number 22 call will kick for Blaine. Lots of pointing and moving going on right now. Bengals do not want a problem to hit her. Flag on the play. We have a delay of game. It's really not a giant play as far as losing yards, but you really don't want to be putting your your kicker in that position where he's where he's dancing in front of that end line. Right. You do not want to do that. And that just means the Raiders kick returner now now he's going to be sitting at the 35 hoping for the ball what the Bengals don't want is a, is a block or a touchdown nice kick nice kick and it's down no, by nothing wrong with that while the fan yells down <laughs> <laughs> just catch it and drop do not try anything please <laughs> this is a very good place to start we're happy with it <laughs> so now, I'm wondering, what do you think? Are they going to go passing or are they going to run? I think they need to continue running it. And I think if we go back to your point, <laughs> where they, they run it a couple times and they feel their way into throwing it. I haven't seen, besides one or two catches, they haven't been very successful there. No, and you're like in a really good spot. It's so. <laughs> a good place to start. Yeah, let's build on this. I, I mean, I, I know we talked about the wide receivers being great. But let's let's get to him. Exactly. Nope. As you said, pitched out to number three. But he catches the ball, and you've got what? You got four white shirts over there already ready. So you'll, you'll get the, you'll get some yards, but 
They're right on top of you. Maybe they're trying to set up some short plays to set up another deep. But man, I'm, I'd love to see more running. But if this works, kudos to them. They're out coaching me. But something we haven't seen earlier in the game is a completed pass. So <laughs> that's a great start. Another run there by Underwood, who was met by three Blaine defenders. Yes, he ran into, <laughs> he ran right into that defender, and you could hear it. We're in a beautiful stadium right now where we've got brick walls everywhere, and it sounded like Underwood just found one of them. <laughs> so it looked like two. <laughs> it did look that way. <laughs> I really thought they had good success running between the tackles right up in the middle of the field. I think those sweeps, it looks like the Bengals are ready for. But we're at third and one, so let's see if they can punch this one through. And Underwood only at 5'9". He looks like one of the smaller players out there on the field, but he's got those quicks. He's able to get through some of those defenders until he's met by some of the brick walls. <laughs> good and they run. go back to him again. Yeah, he uses his looseness there to get around there and get the first down. What I noticed was kind of weird on that play was the quarterback went up to the line, almost looked like he was going to snap it, and then everybody stopped and they looked at the sideline. So I don't know if the coach is trying to get a read on the defense or what's going on there, but that pause certainly was very weird for me to watch. And I don't know if that helps the defense get reset right? because they got that time to think. But you know what they're going to do, I'm guessing. Now we got some guys, now we got three white, they got the white out spread out on the field. Can you see if they're going back to throwing? Back to Callahan, who gets to the Underwood again, and is met by another group of Blaine defenders. It's a nice little run. It looks like Creighton is going with, finally going with something that's working, working for them. Now it's not working at the same rate as throwing it and obviously scoring a touchdown right away, but if you're sticking with something that's working for you, that's how you call your way back into the game. And here we got this pause again. Shifting, moving guys around. And maybe that is in response to Blaine's defense. Callahan, a nice completed pass there to Yudoku. Nice spin move to get that first down. That ball does, still seemed a little lobbed to me. Like I didn't see it like on the frozen rope that you like to see. Hopefully he'll get a little bit of confidence and then he can zing it a little bit more. Definitely should gain some confidence there. A completed pass. You're finally getting some sort of connection with your receivers. So this is a good look for Creighton. Time to get in that purple paint. About 4.30 left, Creighton's still down 0 to 21 against Blaine. They'll run it again with Underwood. Defense was there waiting. Looks like pretty much was, everyone was covered too. I was trying to watch the wide receivers on that play just to see. Again, I'm impressed by the Blaine defense. They seem to be everywhere and covering everything. And that's not easy to do against a very good school. And maybe that's why you, when you were talking about this stoppage, this kind of delay when the quarterback is looking over the side, maybe they're trying to figure out how to navigate this defense. I mean, they've been pressuring them the entire game. It's possible. I see some sickle coverage on the wide receivers. Callaghan with a toss and, oh, an incomplete pass. Had another chance at it. But how did he get that pass off? <laughs> that was a great, it was a great job to get that ball right where it needed to be. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the quarterback's job is to make sure the wide receiver can touch it, and he was able to touch it. So quarterback did his job. Needs a little bit of help there to pull that in and get a touchdown, get this game to at least to be, you know, 7-21 to 21 at this point. You need, you need a score. You really need a touchdown here. And because of that, they're calling a timeout. Yeah, that's got to be extremely frustrating when you have a huge Blaine defender coming at you and you're still able to get that ball off at the last second. And we've seen about three of those passes where they've hit in the hands of Creighton receivers and they just aren't able to catch them. Yeah, I know how that feels. It hurts. <laughs> like, I got the ball to you. That's, that's my job, right? Yeah. If you can touch it, you can catch it. My job is to make sure you can touch it. 
you do what you do, I'll do what I do, and together we will succeed. <laughs> a little under four minutes left here. Crane's still yet to score. I think we've seen a few bright spots here. But what do you think is going to be one big change that Crane's going to need to adjust to in the second half? I think they need to take in, if, if they really are doing that delay to look at the defense, I think they really need to take the time to talk about what they're going to do about that defense. Maybe not do it on a play-by-play -play basis like out here on the field, but like come up with your strategy for the second half and how you're going to handle getting past these guys. Love to see them get some of their wideouts deep. They've shown they can do that on occasion. They're just going to have to make sure that those balls get caught when they're thrown deep enough to be caught. And as much as we have talked about how frustrating it is to watch Creighton's offense. We definitely can't forget about how well Blaine is playing defensively. We have some angry fans to the right of us. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, wanted, they, wanted num they wanted a flag on number 21 who ran on the field late. As long as they set, they're fine. But unfortunately, we have a delay of game here. Took too long to get that play in. So somehow after that timeout, I was going to say after the Raiders timeout. come out with one guy, <laughs> one guy short. Oh, and that's just another, another thing that's not helping them. They're, they're digging themselves a deeper hole, and a lot of it is their self-inflicted mistakes. Yeah, kudos to, to, to that wide receiver. He probably ran out at the last second. Just get in there and line up. You do need to be able to snap the ball, though, and not get that penalty. because obviously the ball wasn't intended to go to him. Exactly. Quarterback would have picked up on that early. Back to Callahan, who completes the pass, and it is a touchdown. Oh. They're going to call it a catch. The ball came out, but they're going to call that a touchdown. <laughs> yep, cross the plane, correct. Finally, <laughs> as Finally. we were just talking about it. And they got on the passing, so they obviously wanted to go back to that. Great catch, extended into the end zone. He fought through the defender to get, a, to get, his, to get his six points. Now the kicker can finally get, some, get, get in, uh, in on the action. And the kick will be... No good. Incomplete. <laughs> So you get half of what you want. <laughs> you get the touchdown. And in a way, the nightmare continues as the extra point is no good. Off to the right. Still with some time here left in the second quarter, but despite the missed kick, it's good to see that they finally get some points on the board, especially with the quarterback making connections finally with the passes as we've seen so many drop passes and that's going to be good momentum for them going into the second half. Yeah that, well my my goal would be here is to force the Bengals to have another three and out try again to see if I can get my you know get my uh, offense on the field and score. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Raiders try anything at this point. The Bengals have a lot of guys up on the line. They're prepared in case someone wants to try something a little tricky. And I am a little surprised at how Creighton looks in this game. Obviously coming off a loss, you think that they'd be extremely sharp, ready to go. But maybe that loss contributed to their loss of focus. Yep, so here we go. We need to... Oh, this is not what they want. Downey is running on the sideline. He's at the 30. Avoids contact, just goes out of bounds. And that was Downey on the entire run. A 60-yard kick return. That's not what you wanted. Right after Crane scores a touchdown. Oh, wow. I'm kind of curious to see now if Blaine goes for like a bomb to just score and just keep going and just enjoy this momentum. I think Raiders, they will. Raiders running a guy out on the field the last minute. Still trying to get everything collected here. Back, back to Herring, who's taking it himself down the middle. 
Picks up some good yards. It's been a while since the Bengals have been on the field. Yeah. And we've seen that pretty frequently in this game. Herring just taking it himself. Yeah, he's, he's not looking to throw it very much so far. He hasn't really needed to either. <laughs> he's like, well, I can do it. Well, and the Raiders defense has to be ready and key on that in the second half. You talk about what has to change. Exactly. Herring again, taking it himself. He gets himself a first down there. And Blaine just not letting up. They're continuing to be aggressive. Obviously, the Raiders are finally on the board, so they know that they have a little bit of momentum, but they're not letting up at all. No, they want to they add on to it. They want to add on before half, for sure. Back to Herring again. He stacked back and in an incomplete pass. He felt the pressure there. He just got rid of that. Absolutely. And, but, and the difference between him throwing that ball deliberately to not complete it, but trying to make something out of nothing, he didn't. He threw it way ahead of his receiver. The ball is more than likely going to be complete. Just move on to the next play. Whereas the Raider quarterback kind of threw it over the middle and got it picked off. So the difference there is something that really something to think about. If, if you're going to give up on the play, just get the incomplete, move on. Continuing to play smart as Herring keeps it himself. An incomplete pass again. Throws it. And we're going to get a roughing the quarterback pretty clearly after he threw the ball. <laughs> Some upset fans here. <laughs> I, they didn't. I don't think they're going to call intentional ground. He threw it at the. He threw it at the. Yeah, he threw it at the feet. He threw it at the feet of his receiver, so it was close enough that you can't throw a flag. Might have been able to throw it on the previous play, depending on how much. But, but that was definitely a roughing the passer play. Yeah. Yep, that was earned. That was a well earned. That was a well earned penalty. He really did clap for the guy. <laughs> yep. And he jumped right up, and he's ready to go again. So uh, he took a pretty good hard hit, and he's going to run the ball. Herring running it again, and getting the touchdown. Pretty much untouched, runs and he hands the ball to the ref. Wow, just an extremely <laughs> smart player, and obviously talented. I mean, he just took this whole possession on himself. And the Bengals are pretty much still doing what they want, taking advantage of every opportunity pretty much. Had one three and out, otherwise had a very successful fo football game. They're up here 27 to six, still with 2.30 left. Make that 28. And again, number 40, Greenberg with the kick. He's been tremendous tonight. Had plenty of opportunities to showcase his talent. So good to see him ready every time he steps up. Yeah, as far as what the Bengals need to do differently, I, I don't see anything. They'll just have to be ready to adjust if Creighton Durham Hall can turn it around. Creighton Durham Hall has two and a half minutes left. Lots of time. Basically, the Bengals just took that drive. I think it took them a minute. To go down and score. Exactly. Almost every time they've scored, it's been <laughs> very quick. <laughs> and that's going to have to change in the second half. And that's maybe where the Raiders can find their momentum, find their energy defensively. We've seen a couple energized guys after some tackles, and maybe they can carry that over to the offensive end. They have to stop. They have to stop. They have to stop the Bengals. Raiders make sure they catch this and then run. Some Blaine fans standing up as Greenberg kicks it off. That was returned by 26 Mendez. A lot of action there. Like, decent, decent starting point. So the Raiders will start at the 23 line, 23 yard line, with about 225 left. Doing anything they can to gain some momentum and gain some positive juice to go into the second half. There we go. I like that. I like a run. There's still lots of time on the clock. It's not a big problem. Don't panic. Don't create a situation where the Bengals can add to their to their lead. 
You want to get a touchdown here. Oh, somebody lost their shoe. I think Underwood lost his shoe. <laughs> Underwood lost his shoe. All right, well, we did see good change of pace before. With Guerra, so let's see if Guerra can gets the run here or if they decide to do a pass. Back to Blaine's Callahan. expecting a pass. Steps back and is completed to number three, Joba. I saw the Blaine defenders backing up a little bit as he was getting ready to hike the ball, so they were expecting a pass there. Good job there getting the, getting the play completed. Exactly, at this point, it's about completing the play, being sharp. Got out of bounds, so he stopped the clock. Get a first down, and then do it again. And throughout this game, we've talked about number one, Tony Underwood, a lot. And during the season, although they've only played three games, he's averaging about 76.3 yards per game. I said a really aggressive tackle there by Blaine. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if it was almost too impressive. Like, the one thing you don't want here, I think, if you're Blaine, is like a roughing penalty. They did get the first down, but you don't want to give away any free yards here. You got a minute 37. You're going to try to stop them. Go in with this big lead. Do not let them get momentum. I thought that, that penalty might have been a little, uh, that tackle might have been a little bit too much, but luckily it wasn't for uh, the Bengals' defense. Back to Callahan. Sizes it up and complete pass there for a first down. They're moving up. Another great completed catch there by Walsh. Seeing a little bit better chemistry now. I think they kind of have, they're back into their groove of their original playing. Clock stops temporarily to set the, to set the down markers, but now it's running. Back to Callahan. He's looking and finds a completed pass. Whoa. Took a big hit, but he was able to keep the ball. He is a little rattled by that. Incomplete. Oh. Incomplete catch. I thought he caught, that. I thought he caught it as well. <laughs> uh, obviously, I was incorrect. A tremendous tackle there. Well, that just adds to the pain. <laughs> my number 22 call. To get hit in the back like that and not catch the balls. At least if you caught the ball, you'd have that, that adrenaline helping you. He really did take a good shot there. I, I thought he held on the ball, but I guess he dropped it. It does stop the clock, but that's not necessarily what the Raiders want. Back to Callahan. Well, got to Buck, back to four, red. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have some illegal motion. I think we had two players moving at the same time. I think that play is going to come back. A little bit different look there for the Raiders. Trying to find something that's working for them. There it is. I'm calling a false start at the movement. Repeat second down. One minute left in the game. Bears are moving forward and then back. They're, this Maybe they want to get out of this first half. <laughs> just end I it. think that might be best. <laughs> well, let's just get out of here. <laughs> Start over. Start over after the break. Back to Callahan, who steps back. Finds Guerrero right in the center. He's got good speed, like you said earlier. He was able to get pretty close. 30 seconds left. Yeah, good find there. He was able to able to navigate throughout that tight space, get a few yards, but the Raiders are going to have to find something a little bit more in order to get a touchdown within the next 30 seconds. Back to Callahan. Out, completed pass by number 21, Walsh. He got, he got the first down. Moves the chains, 24 seconds left. That's enough for Raiders. First and 10 for CBH. Some happy fans here as they got 
finally seeing a, a completed pass that we haven't seen a lot throughout this game. Back to Callahan who steps back, throws it long. And an almost interception there. Safety was all over that the whole, he watched that the whole way. More great defense by Blaine. That was number four, Williams. Fortunate it wasn't picked actually. Exactly, and the way this game has been going, I'm surprised it wasn't. <laughs> He's had a couple knocked off on the sidelines. Those balls do seem to hang a little bit in the air for a while and the defenders are definitely keying on that and they're able to adjust. He was open, but he was open when he threw it, exactly. not when the ball arrived. 18 seconds left. He pitched back to Callahan, takes a step back, decides to run it himself, and he'll run out of bounds. Really smart play there by him. Really nice play by Red, too, on the sideline. He saw his quarterback was going to, going to the sideline, saw a defender come and actually made a block to prevent his quarterback from getting clocked. That's one thing you don't want to have happen with 12 seconds left in the half exactly. is, is to get clobbered. <laughs> so good job by that, by that captain to step up and protect his quarterback. But the Raiders showing they are not, they are not ready to give, this, give up on this half. They got 12 seconds. They want to use every second they can to try to get on the board again. Back to Callahan, takes a step back. Looks like he's going to run it again himself, but he launches it down the field. Oh, and it's caught! So and we a touchdown! We had a play go the Raiders' way. How about that? Oh, my gosh. He threw, it to his, he threw it to his wide receiver, who was actually double covered. One of the defenders tips it back, and an Johnny on the spot jumps in and grabs a touchdown. Maybe the second half will be more of that. That's it's something, gotta be. That is exactly how you want to end that. Three exactly. seconds left. That is exactly what the Raiders needed. They go into the locker room with a really good feeling. Hey, guys, we are not cursed. Did you just see what happened? <laughs> and they finally have caught a break. I mean, this entire game. And they get the one-point conversion. They needed that. They need every point they can get. I guess in a way, you know, to be down two touchdowns basically at the half after four turnovers is really a blessing, I would think. Exactly, especially on a play like that, something that was not even intended to go that way. And for once during the game, it actually benefited the Raiders. Yes, finally they had Lady Luck <laughs> look upon them in a, in a favorable way. And even despite their unsuccessful throws throughout the game, it's still great by Callahan to trust his receivers, although it didn't go as planned, but still to be able to trust his receivers and st he's still throwing the ball. And eventually, I mean, they still have a no whole other second half. Eventually it's gonna start clicking. Yeah, they uh, definitely, as far as everything go that you'd want to have happen, they used that time very effectively. They drove down the field, they were able to get a touchdown. And they don't give the other team much time to, any time really to respond. They're gonna accept this kickoff and then it'll be halftime. That couldn't that 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 drive at least could not have really gone better. Well, you don't want the ball. <laughs> exactly. You don't you don't want to be lucky to get a touchdown. But, exactly. But you'll take it. And Blaine will run it. Looks like he had an opening on the side, but he goes back to the middle. He wanted to see if something could come, happen. And that was number seven, Gurley. For the people that were wondering about the Raiders being cursed the first half, you saw that wide open field. Thought, oh no! <laughs> yeah, but it closed exactly. down. Creighton Durham was able to hold them off. And now we can go into halftime. So at halftime, it's 13 to 28. And this is uh, Minnesota football from the University of St. Thomas. If you'd like to sponsor a TSB television broadcast, we've got a Patreon page for that. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSB television and make a pledge for premier Twin City sports coverage. 
Welcome back, everyone. This is Jessica January with Don Ackerman. We are at the University of St. Thomas for a non-conference matchup between Blaine and Creighton Durham Hall. The score is 28 to 13 as Blaine is up in this game, but still an entire second half to go. So, Don, what do you think Creighton has to do? I know we kind of talked about it in the first half, but how do you think they need to come out in this first half to have a chance to win this game? Well, I think I think if you're Creighton Durham it's almost like they're starting over. I noticed that they had a different warm-up routine than the Bengals did when they came out. So, I don't know if they approach this as a new game, like pretend it's 0-0 or what. You definitely want to capitalize on that first half. You need to build on that. You need to basically shut out the Bengals in the second half based on what we've seen so far. So, you just need to make sure you get that momentum going and unfortunately you have to kick the ball off because that's how that's how it's, that's how it turned out so now you're kicking the ball off and you're down by 15 you got to stop them here you need a three and out and we are underway in the second half the ball is caught there by Blaine as they're running down the field and they are down at about the 35 yard line that's a decent return actually not really, I think I think the Raiders would love to pin him down a little deeper. Again, like we were talking about before, I'm looking at the sideline to see how, you know, we got some fired up guys here, defense fired up. I, 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 I appreciate the calm person, but as you can see here, it's first and 10, uh, and uh, defense then needs to step up here. They cannot let the Bengals continue any success. And that was... Herring with a great pass. A catch there by 25. Schlung in. Basically gets back to the line of scrimmage. And now we're at second and 10. Oh, 10 on the scoreboard at least. Oh, they adjusted it. Another pitch back. A nice throw there, a complete pass caught by 25 Schlingen, who's taken down about the 30 yard line. A 33 yard gain. First and 10 for Blaine. He was wide open. Wide open. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what Creighton Durham all wanted. Carrying now down the field by Fredrickson, who's tackled. So a good start here for Blaine. A nice throw in the previous possession and a good run here. Yeah, pick up six, so we got second and four. There's the false start. That is, some of the fans were yelling for that on the previous play. <laughs> it wasn't called. Instead, they gained six yards. Now they lose five. So it's second and nine from the 32-yard line. Back to Herring again. He pitches it to Fredrickson again, who's running down and is met by a group of Creighton defense players. I don't think we really saw that sweep in the first half, so I guess we, we see that we see the Bengals are still gonna bring out new things. They're not done. I'm I would guess they're approaching this game as if it's zero zero, but maybe not. I think that's a really good mindset to have. One yard game, thirty eight of the thirty one. Third and eight right now at the thirty one. Back to Herring who steps back. It looks like he's going to run it himself, but he throws it long. And an incomplete pass there. Did a good job eluding the defensive pressure there. Puts the ball basically where either his receiver catches it, or if you do catch it, it will be at the one or two yard line, maybe even a touchback. So not a really a bad play, really. And Herring has ran the ball countless times in the first half. So he's able to keep the Raiders defense on their heroes. I'm not sure if he's gonna run it himself or he's gonna throw it, so nice play there. Yeah, he might have been thinking about both on that last play. 
for an eight on the 31. Back to Herring again, who throws it. Complete pass there. And completed there by Call. Really was, smart play. That was a really nice play. I heard a lot of people yelling for a draw there. Bengals having nothing of it. Put their guy in the shotgun and let him throw. So that'll give Lane a first down. Now he kept it himself. Again, we've seen Harry run it countless times, and he takes it again himself. Yeah, picked up four yards there on a nice spin move. Now they're down to 11. They can still get a first down before they get a touchdown here. Yeah, back to Herring, who pitches it off. And right through the middle for a touchdown. Wow. Tim Maffey. Great run. He, bit, he took the contact, recovered, and just drove. You could hear that. You could hear the pads hit up here. But it didn't stop. Number two, he kept going. Outstanding offense. And, and uh, you know, I'll tell you, something you usually don't see, but we've got Bengals fans in front of us. They're looking back at their coach's corner. And getting some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they're appreciating the play calling here. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, they're doing it from all sides. They're running it straight down the middle. They're getting to the outside. Yeah, they're, they're definitely having a very effective offense. And that kick is good. So now Blaine is up 35. Green Durham Hall 13. Still with nine minutes to go in this second quarter. But if I'm Blaine, if I'm, excuse me, third quarter, <laughs> second half, third second quarter. Half. There you go. Um, if I'm Blaine, if I'm the if I'm the players or the coaches, I'm feeling really good about our team. I think that they started the second half really well. They're not letting up at, letting up at all, and they're being aggressive. And this I, entire and I see Blaine executing on all levels. You got their special teams has been playing pretty well. They haven't really let Creighton and Hall do a lot on that side. They're they're making their extra points. You, you offensively and defensively, they're 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 controlling this game, and the scoreboard's reflecting that. They've taken full advantage of those turnovers. And they haven't really made any mistakes to compensate for it, really. Oh, so number seven is also a kick returner. Number 26, Mendez. So we have some fans standing to their feet right now. As number 40, Greenberg, will kick off which is received by number seven, Gira, who is all alone by himself. And it looks like he's gonna take it all the way on the sideline. And he's all the way there for a Goodbye. touchdown. Well, a now, 90 yard Now I wanna go return. back and look and see if he touched, if he was on the kickoff return in the first half. If that's an adjustment, that's a great adjustment by the Raiders. If not, it's still a great result. That's exactly what they'd want to have happen. Now, if Blaine comes back and does what they do again, you're like, wow, is this gonna be a shootout? What's gonna happen? <laughs> but that was the perfect result. Oh, that now you see some jumping around. Now you see some high-fiving on the purple. That's what, that's what they needed to see. That's what they needed to have happen. Exactly, and hopefully for the Raiders, this momentum, this energy will carry over into the rest of the game. Yeah, hard to feel too jinxed if you can pull that off. Extra point is good. And with that kick, Blaine is up 35 to 20. It's back to a two touchdown game basically with, with the two point conversion and an extra point. And I was just talking about Blaine and how their players gotta be feeling good, their coaches gotta be feeling good. And right before our eyes, a 90 yard kick return. Uh, the, the real key will be how they respond to it. I don't know if I'd feel too mad if I'm the Blaine coach. We still got this game under control, but we definitely don't want to give the Purple Raiders too much hope. Because we want this game, we want to stay undefeated. One cool thing I noticed about this stadium is we can hear the echoes coming off the building across the way where the basketball hoops are. I can hear the fans echoing off that. So that's something you, I usually don't hear in a stadium. So that's kind of a kind of another additional cool thing about this this stadium. If you ever get a chance to come out and see this field, it is really pretty. Now 
Now Blaine will be set to receive as the Raiders kick off. And they'll let that one go. Oh. That really paid off for Blaine. Blaine the Blaine <laughs> The Blaine player was watching to see if it would roll out of bounds. He didn't think it would roll the end zone, and it didn't. It went out at, like, the one-yard line. Basically, that moves the ball 35, 35 yards up the field. Not really what Creighton Durham Hall wanted to have happen. <laughs> yeah, it might, may have been a combination of good eyes and maybe some luck there for Downey, but... Yeah, that that uh, <laughs> that ball does not. It's not round. Oh. 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 <laughs> I didn't know that rule. Well. <laughs> apparently. Apparently, you get to kick it again. I, I guess. I guess you can choose to decline that penalty instead of accepting it. Thirty-five. So Strand will kick off again, which will this time be caught by Blaine. And they're taken down before so the 30. That's a big win for the Raiders. Instead of giving the ball up at the 35, they're down to 22. Oh, well, sorry. My correction, 25. Or 26, technically, according to the scoreboard. So Blaine will start at the 26 yard line. Back to Herring. Not much room there to make much progress. Good defensive play. Fredrickson with the carry on that play. Second down. Second down, 10 to go still at the 26. Back to Herring, who hands it off for the carry. Number five, Whitting. Excuse me, Wittig. He's not getting far there. Yeah, two carries. Back to back possessions and Blaine didn't make much progress. Yeah, they pick up two on that, so it's third and seven. This is exactly what the Raiders would like. They can get a stop here. This is a great way to follow up on that touchdown. Back to Herring again as he takes a step back and launches it and completes the pass to number five, Wittig. Wide open, turns and gets a couple more yards. That'll be a first down. 12 yard gain, that'll be enough for a Bengal first down. It'll be first and 10 for Blaine. Raiders had, Raiders had it under control, and then uh, unfortunately, Bengals are able to uh, run a great play and get a first down. Back to Herring again, who hands it off, and it's run down the middle and taken down. What a great carry there by number two, Mafi. A nine yard gain there. Nah, you're looking really good on those runs. <laughs> yeah, I really like seeing Blaine's composure. I mean, they had two possessions where they didn't make much much yardage, but they keep their composure and they're sticking with their plan. As wide open, Herring launches one down the field for a touchdown. Untouched. That was complete to Downey. A couple points back to the coaching booth again by the fans. Up yeah, front. exactly. You guys are rocking it. Little, some some handshakes in front. That play action really worked. Yeah, a couple runs, and then suddenly, guess what? Not a run. <laughs> you got a guy running down the field all by himself. No one in there behind. No safety behind to contain. And the guy just runs. He could have gone another 100 yards. And now Blaine is up. 41 to 20. Looking to add one more. And the kick is good. So now 42 for Blaine and 20 for Creighton. Still with seven minutes left. But it looks like Blaine has this under control. <laughs> it really does. Even though we saw, you know, a glimpse of 
some really good football with that kick return yeah. by Creighton. Blaine didn't. They didn't lose their composure. Yeah. They stayed with it and resulted in a touchdown. They took that ray of hope and they crushed it. <laughs> and that's what you got to do because Creighton is a good team. Even the game of football. I mean, it's a long game and anything can happen. But you, if you stay on your toes and you stay confident and you're continuing to be aggressive, you can really crush another team's. Oh, we, we still have a quarter and a half left, right? Yeah. We, we've got 60 points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that really good defense or, <laughs> I mean, really bad defense or really good offense? Well, maybe maybe oh, we just got <laughs> maybe a reporting. We'll see 80 maybe, maybe we'll get to see some points. <laughs> wow. Maybe what? 80 to 70 was last week, so. Maybe we've got some uh, potential contention for that. And that was number 40, Greenberg. Guerra running it again. This time there's no space for him, and he's down. Got to the 20-yard line, looks like. Yeah, Blaine was making sure he didn't run 90 yards and score a touchdown this time. No, enough of that. <laughs> you used your one. So Creighton will line up at the 20-yard line. Another chance for their offense to get going here. Let's see what happens. Based on the amount of points we've, we're seeing on the board, maybe you can't run it anymore. I don't even know what, I don't even know <laughs> what you would do. Back to Callahan. An incomplete pass there. Took a hit, too. Yeah. A lot of pressure right there. He held the ball as long as he could. He He's shaking up a little bit. You can see him limping and stretching and looking over at the sideline. <laughs> Coach, that kind of hurt. And that's been Blaine's defense all night. They've been everywhere. Every, every time a receiver catches it, every time it looks like Callahan has a good look, Blaine's defense has been right there. Yeah, it's basically been a Bengals barbecue as far as feasting on that offense. <laughs> they've, been, they've been enjoying themselves. That's a good one. <laughs> that's handed off, and that's carried. Not sure who carried that one, but didn't make much. But even on that ground. play, there were a couple players shadowing the quarterback in case he was doing like a fake and keeping it. So even the Bengals were chasing that. Once, once they established where the ball was, they certainly pounced on it, but... They're all over. This has to be a really frustrating game for the Raiders. Two-yard gain on that last possession. They're now at third and eight. Third and eight, 22-yard line. Got single coverage out here with no help. Callahan will launch it, and like you said, complete pass. Oh. And he's down for a we first a, down. We do have a flag in the backfield. That's usually in the area where holding's called. Oh, helmet to helmet contact. Personal foul, roughing the passer is the call. That's that'll add 15. Exactly, that adds 15 to it. That play got a little bit better. Well, the Raiders will take that. But you called it on that one. Single coverage out there on number three, and they went right to him. Yeah, did a little did a little hook and just basically waited for the ball. Now, interesting, they called a penalty where there was helmet, some helmet contact, roughing the passer, but it looks like the passer's fine. So that's good. I almost wonder, you know, when that concussion protocol and all that stuff kicks in. Yeah. When, when they, whenever they say something about a helmet. So first and 10 at the 45, back to Callahan, who winds up and a complete pass there. I think for a first down. That was nice to Burke. Pass, yeah. Sorry, nice pass, good first down. Yeah, it looks like the Raiders are really clicking here now. Yeah, we might, we, maybe we do get to see 100 points. <laughs> We're not really on pace for that, but it's still fun to imagine. <laughs> so first and 10 at the 34. Ball carried throughout the middle, but stopped short. 
one thing I noticed before Underwood went down was he was pulling on some, somebody was pulling on his arm to get that ball loose. So the Bengals are not afraid to keep going after that. And, and on that play, they were trying to knock it loose. Underwood wasn't giving it up, but that doesn't mean they weren't going to try. So they gain one yard. Second and nine at the 33. Back to Callahan, who hands it off again to Underwood. Looks to go on the outside and comes back in to two Blaine defenders. Nowhere to go. Tigers are usually solitary animals, but I think in this case they are definitely working as a team and they are all over the field working together as a group. There's really not a lot of options for Creedmoor Hall so far. And we've seen Underwood able to get up in the middle a few times, but it's either he has some room or there's none at all. That's right. <laughs> Third and 11 at the 35. Callahan, an incomplete pass. There was nobody Bengals near that throw. To him. He really didn't have a lot of time. And I think at this point, are we in go for territory? I think we are. So the Raiders are going to leave their team on the field here. Oh, maybe we'll see another of those pooches. Is their quarterback also their punter? I guess I didn't really do any research. Sorry, guys. <laughs> he is a captain, so he can do anything he wants, maybe. Callahan steps back. A great catch there by Underwood, but nowhere to go. They set up the screen. I think that's what they wanted, but the Bengals are ready. Blaine forces the turnover on down. So basically, that's our fifth turn. I like to count it as one. Turnover in my book. <laughs> Not that anyone cares. <laughs> anyway, it's first and ten for the Bengals. Back to Herring, who's runs it himself. <laughs> An outstanding juke there. <laughs> it was a very nice fake. The fans appreciated it. I hope, that, I hope our audio can pick up a little bit of that. Woo! We do have a lot of Bengals fans sitting in front of us, and they were pretty, they were pretty hyped up by that fake right there. Yeah, they have, they have a lot to be, lot to be hyped up about this game. Oh, for sure. Second and seven on a 37. Pitch back to Herring, fakes the handoff, steps back, and he looks to go long, but it was a little short, and he missed it. Incomplete pass. So the Bengal fans are asking for some interference there. I don't think they're going to get it. I actually don't think he contacted the player, but they want to call shielding, saying that he didn't have a chance to go for the ball. But actually, the, I think I think the Bengal player could have made more of a case for it by going trying to go through the defender to get that ball, but right. he didn't. So no flags, no laundry on the field, third down. And if that could have been just a little longer, there was nobody back there. That would have been a touchdown for sure. Yes. Back to here again. Look to go long again, and he incomplete pass. Defender's on him, but, but he's got one hand on the receiver, so we're going to have penalties on both teams right here. I think that's going to be offsetting. So that was intended for number five, Wittig. Pass interference, second flag against CDH. Penalties are offset. So pretend that never happened. It's third and seven again. Replay third down. Bengals got a break there with that hold at the end because that hold was well after the holding. The hold on the defense was well after the hold on the offense. Back to Herring, he steps back. A short pass there and caught and running up the field by number nine, Fredrickson, and that'll be a first down. Nice little screen underneath, that's what they wanted. 
He's able to find a lot of space. 20 and, yard gain there. And it just seems like on offense, the Bengals seem to find more open space than, than, the, than the Raiders do. Back to Herring again, who fakes the handoff and takes it himself. He's met by a group of Creighton yeah, defenders. Yeah, he paid for that. <laughs> he paid for that idea. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering how many of those plays are designed or if they just give him the option. He seems to like to let the defense get past him a little bit, and then he runs up and either passes it or decides to run. But either way, he's made good decisions so far with every single one of those. Second and seven at the 40. Back to Herring again. A quick throw on the side. And that'll be a first down. Completed to number 83, Downey. He's been an impressive receiver, actually. I kind of like number 83. Yeah, Herring's connection with all of his receivers have been spot on tonight. It's whether he's passing or handing it off or taking it himself. Might have a false start here. Quite a few flags this quarter. More than we've seen in the entire first half. Now we got a false start there. That'll back the ball up a little bit. But based on, based on the way the, oh, illegal motion, okay. First and 15, but I don't know if that's really gonna stop the Bengals. They haven't really seemed to have a problem with how many feet getting down the field. Like I said, they've really kept their composure, been poised all night. Oh, now they're doing the pause thing. <laughs> I like to see some, that defensive player clapping. He's fired up, let's go. Back to Herring, who hands it off to number nine, Fredrickson. Raiders are ready for that one. Schwinn and Marshall with the stop for the Raiders. So I don't think they picked up anything on that play. Actually, they lost a couple yards. So second and 17 at the 39. Two yard loss, second and 17 at the 39. Back to Herring, he steps back, finds an opening on the side, and it's completed. Oh, that Raider defender thought he might have had something. He kind of jumped the gun there. I really thought that was going inside the slot because the slot receiver kind of started right after that clap. So the Blaine quarterback has this clap he does instead of yelling hike. 11 yard gain, third and six at the 28 as Herring steps back again, completes a pass as it's carried down the middle and a great spin there. He's finally taken down for a first down. That was number five, Wittig. That's something I tried to tell my daughter really, really when she was young playing basketball. Work on a spin move. You can use it in so many ways. We've seen so many spin moves work out here that I, I love seeing the, a good spin move. Works in basketball, works in football. First and 10 at the 14. Playing with a great opportunity to score here. The hands off and it's carried. Run number two, Mafi. He looked big on that play. He just kept going. So wasn't it just second and 17 a second ago? Yes. And now it's second and five and they're down the field. Uh, totally unfazed by that. Exactly. Their patience, poise. It's the reason why they're up big in this game. They're looking to come down here and score again. About 50 seconds left in this quarter. Just had a five yard gain. Second and five at the nine. I wouldn't be surprised if Harry just took it himself. He's done that plenty of times. But he doesn't, he hands it off. And they'll call it off. Oh, they're saying he's down at the one yard line. Wow. I thought he rode the Raider into the end zone, but apparently <laughs> I did too. not. So what a great play though. This Blaine team, their offense is, looks really great tonight. And Mahi looks like he's running downhill lately. So let's see if they just give it to him and let him punch it in or what they'll do here. Are we gonna get a QB sneak? What do you think? 
Oh, yeah. And touchdown. All by himself. <laughs> Nobody touched him. I think the first person that had a chance at him was that photographer. <laughs> yeah, not much he could do there. <laughs> so they reward him for for that for the hit he took on the previous play and ending up at the one yard line. They said, "Ah, we'll get you that extra one. Don't worry about it." Yeah, Green Greenberg has gotten his his kicks in this game. I mean, I'm not sure how many he kicks usually on the year, but he's been working tonight and he's been great. Yep. And that kick is good as well. So with 23 seconds left, Lane is up 49, and Creighton is has 20 points, so they're at least on the board. But Don, what do you think needs to change? I know it might seem like this game might be out of range, but just talking about Creighton as a team and how they perform tonight, what do you think some key takeaways are going to be when they look at film? They have to win this fourth quarter. I was sitting here thinking about it as I was watching the Bengals drive down the field. Do those turnovers really, would that have stopped them? Or did it just give them more chances? Did it really just take away chances from St. Thomas? Oh, I'm sorry, St. Thomas. I'm looking at the ST <laughs> at the field. Uh, did it really take the, the ch chances away from Creed Durham Hall? Because it almost seems like they, they do not seem like they're, that the turnovers really matter. They're going down the field and scoring anyway. Right. I almost feel like they could have done that without any turnovers. It's just amazing to, to see that. But Green Hall has to really, I guess they got to look at their defense and um, figure out not to turn the ball over. And this will be, could be their second loss in a row. And they're going to have to figure out how to turn this around. They certainly don't want to keep that streak going. And you don't really want to do that at home. Number 40, Greenberg, kicked off, which was returned by Gira who again is stopped very quickly. Only a nine yard return there. Well, we, I think do we have some player in here. We have an injury on the field. It's like a Blaine player. Number four, red, appears to be down. I didn't quite see exactly what happened. Number four is Williams. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I said, Williams. I was looking at the He's other able team. to walk <laughs> off the field, though, which is great. Uh, I'd look at the scoreboard and say, okay, let's get him some rehab early and next man up. So, so the, the Raiders will have it. <laughs> Uh, first down, 10 yards to go at the 25. They have 19 seconds to try to turn around. And an incomplete pass there. I'm telling you, if he would have, okay, so I've been asking for him to zip it. If he would have zipped that one out, I think that would have been a pick six. The fact that that was lobbed just out of the range of the defender was, was, was a blessing in that case because he knew that was coming and he was chasing it down and he was ready to go. I think he wanted to go Deion Sanders on that. And unfortunately <laughs> the ball kind of lobbed so he could just he could just knock it away, but he could not pick it off. Second and 10 at the 25. Still about 15 seconds left. And it's Underwood who will carry it. And it's taken down. He's looked pretty good tonight. Yeah. Running the ball, getting some yards. Five yard gain, third and five at the 30. Five yard gain there, third and five at the 30. And that ends the quarter. And that's the end of the third quarter. The score, Blaine 49, CH 20. So Blaine still with 49, Creighton with 20. One more quarter to go, and it doesn't look like much has changed from the first half to the second. I think it's got a little bit worse. I would agree. <laughs> for, for, the, for the home team. But, but the Bengals have kept, like you said, we talk about their poise and keeping their, they, they've just kept their groove going. And they've been unfazed by pretty much anything Creighton Durner Hall has done. 
And it's a little unfortunate that the Raiders haven't been able to carry over from that first, that 90-yard kick return by Guerra, that they weren't able to turn that into some sort of spark, some sort of energy for them. But obviously we can't overlook Blaine's offense and defense this entire game. They've been great on both ends. I was going to say, I guess we'll have to give credit to Blaine because they just shut it down. They, there was maybe a glimmer of hope, and they said, nah, we got this. And that's what you have to do, um, especially as a ranked team. Um, you can't give any any other team any hope, especially if they're chasing after you in points. So it's a good look for them. A complete pass there. Nice throw by Callahan. It's probably the kind of play that Blaine's going to give up. We'll let you get a completion, but we're not going to let you get a first down. That makes it fourth and one. And at this point, maybe you're just like, well, I don't know. We can't give them the ball this deep. <laughs> so we're just going to have to punt it. So Blaine gave up just enough there. Let him complete the pass, but we're not going to let you get a first down. Kick there. Calls from here, catch. Now it's caught by Strand. So Blaine will start at the 35. 32 yard kick for Roscoe. Nice little 32 yard kick. Probably like a little bit more. 10 for Blaine at their own 36. So first and 10 for Blaine at the 36. We got a new quarterback in. Oh, we're going to direct snap. Number nine will carry it. That was Fredrickson. Number nine, Fredrickson taking the snap for the Bengals. That is Fredrickson. That's a little stop for the Raiders. Two yard gain. He's, he's listed as a quarterback slash wide receiver. So it looks like he'll be playing quarterback for the rest of this game. And I was waiting to see when, you know, the Blaine coaches would make that decision to put their second string in and let them get some experience. Absolutely. So Fredrickson will Ooh. throw it and an incomplete pass there, but that looked really good. <laughs> I was going to say, as, as a quarterback and wide receiver, he's got to be a little bad at that wide receiver didn't pick that up. He's like, I threw a nice ball there. Go get it. Okay, so now... So this is interesting. On third down, we've got the starting quarterback back in. So we'll see Herring take a step back with it. And a nice catch there on the end. He runs out of bounds, third but a first down. So the Bengals are not done. <laughs> They're not taking any chances. No. And so, OK, I was, I was, I was going to wonder, are they going to keep swapping QBs here? Because that's an that's interesting tactic to pull him in on third down. So first and ten at the fifty. Who's Back that? to Herring who hands it off to Mafe right down the minute, middle. Someone had a good hold of his jersey, but he still punch, punches hold forward for another yard after that. And that loud clap is back. <laughs> Looks like we got a timeout here. We got a player down. Another injury, it looks like, for Blaine. Offensive line. Number 7-0. Looks like... <laughs> Trainer is out on the field. Doesn't seem like he's getting up as quickly as the previous one. Nope, he might be. He's, he might be done for the nail. We got the medical person out there. And that's also another reason why you He's getting think up about now. the coaches. Oh. 78. So he's able to walk off the field with the limp, but that was number 78, Dylan Brillard. But as I was saying, I, like when you think about the coaches and you look at the game and how far you're up, 
and you try to decide when you're going to pull your first string out or put your second string in. Okay, this is interesting. So we have the quarterback, starting quarterback, and the backup quarterback are both in the backfield right now. So I'm hearing with the catch, soft toss there, and it's run almost all the way down the field, and he's still going. That was number nine, Fredrickson. So a couple plays ago, he's quarterbacking, and now he's catching. <laughs> A 36-yard gain by Fredrickson. Maybe after it says it was wide receivers, that's how it's done, boys. <laughs> when I'm back there QB, and that's what you need to do for me. You catch the ball and you go. I was almost wondering if both players like that, like you could snap to either guy. Yeah. <laughs> so first and ten here for Blaine on the 14-yard line. Snap back again to Herring, and a complete pass on the side and another first down I think first and goal that was number three quarter with the catch so a Blaine moving the ball down the field no problem yeah they've yet to see see any resistance here from Craig. they got to third down put in the starting quarterback again now they're back down the field <laughs> Back to Herring, who hands it off. Oh, but it's tackled there. That was number five, Whitting. So Creighton not giving up too early. So Blaine here, second and goal at the five. So nine minutes left in this quarter. But Blaine with a decisive lead here, 49 to 20. Back to Herring, who hands it off. Run down the middle for a touchdown. Ran right in. Was some resistance. It wasn't untouched, <laughs> but it didn't look that hard. Yep, wasn't enough. That was number nine, Fredrickson, with the touchdown. So the backup quarterback and wide receiver gets the run in for the score. <laughs> And Blaine pours it on. They are not done. Very interesting to do that switch, I think, on that third down. Oh, well, unfortunately, that is enough to send some of the Creed and Durham fans home. The section to the left of us is emptied out quite, quite, quite largely. And the Bengals add another point to that. The kick is good by number 40, Ben Greenberg. And now they're up 56 to 20. And still had a good chunk of the fourth quarter left. And I did not see Blaine go to like a eat the clock offense there. Yeah, they're they, nonstop. They just moved down the field, scored. They need one. So even even unfortunately, even late this game, the Creed Durham Hall still getting it together. They're like, oh, we need one. They were one short in their uh, special teams huddle over there. So at this point for the Raiders, all they can do is try to have some sort of momentum going into their next game. Obviously, there's still almost nine minutes left in this quarter, so they can't give up. But they can still have some sort of positive plays, positive energy going into the next one. The season isn't over yet. Well, it's definitely not over. But this game has them a lot. It gives them a lot to think about. Absolutely. So for Blaine, number 40, Greenberg will kick. And it's returned. Nice Ran down moves. the field. That was number 26, Mendez. Nice move to get to the sidelines. Got up to like the 30, what, 32, 33 yard line? 30. Oh. Make that the 30. <laughs> yep, you're right. I thought he got further ahead, <laughs> but but I was blocked by the whole sideline, to be fair. So first and 10 for the Raiders at the 30, like Don said. Eight minutes left to go. Callahan will step back. And he launches a long one down the field, and it is incomplete. 
Callahan's pass attempt with the three-deep Dorbach. The complete defense was number... Dorbach's clearly their, clearly their star receiver, but Blaine's ready for that. He's in double coverage right over there. The only way you're going to get it to him is if he can outrun him or if you can somehow thread the needle. But the Blaine defense is ready for that. Right. And he hasn't gotten to do much at all this game. And like you said, it's definitely a testament to Blaine's defense. And they're obviously prepared for his talent. Back to Callaghan again. This time, another incomplete pass, but a flag on the play. Yeah, I think the ball was a little behind, but I think he might have been grabbed. What are they going to call here? Didn't really see a grab. I don't think it was offensive pass interference, but maybe they're discussing that. Nope, defense. There you go. That'll give him a first down. <laughs> Fans not too happy about that call. No, I think he's calling that a sympathy, <laughs> sympathy flag. The Raiders will take it, though. <laughs> First and 10 now at the 45. So the Raiders are continuing to look for some sort of light in this game. Ball snap back to Callaghan, who is handed off to Underwood, makes the carry. Stop made by number 27. Eight. Three Good burst of speed second, he gets up there. Three yard gain, second and seven at the 48. Single coverage up top. I think they saw that. Maybe they'll change their play to do that, to uh, take advantage of it. Back to Callian again, who hands it off to Underwood, who finds a seam and gets a first down. Yeah, he has that nice cutback motion. He is so quick. <laughs> so Creighton and Hall used that spread offense to give, their defense, to give their running back some room. I really thought they might try to do a single coverage, take advantage of that on the top. Maybe next play. Oh, Underwood looks like he has a stinger. He's on the sideline in a little bit of pain. Definitely something you don't want to see as he's been one of the better players tonight in this game. Oh. And Blaine will get a sack. Wow. No one opened down the field. <laughs> Continued smothering defense by Blaine. Yes. Despite their huge lead, I mean, they are not letting... <laughs> go at all. No, the barbecue's still going on. <laughs> still having Raider for dinner. <laughs> Putting that poor guy on a spit and spinning him slowly. <laughs> so a seven yard loss there for the Raiders. Second and 17 at the 46. Callaghan passes off again. To number seven, Gira. A 10 yard gain, oh, but still third and seven at this 36. All right, and uh, the I Believe cheer is erupted from the Bengals fans. You can really hear the echo now. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, they're right. It's always funny to me how quickly those cheers go and live and, uh, live and die. Callahan to pass again, incomplete. That was intended to number three, Dobak. Looking for his key receiver. Just led him too far out of bounds. I don't think they tried that cheer earlier, the I believe. I, I have heard it in the first quarter, which is a little, a little yeah. premature. <laughs> yeah, right. I think it's safe to say now. I think, I think a... it's good timing. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think you can get rid of believe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't need to start the I believe, because the I know. <laughs> Now we have a timeout. Timeout, CDH. 308 left. They're still calling timeout. <laughs> fourth, fourth and seven. They want to convert this. 
I was a little surprised with the, as someone's throwing something from the roof, I was a little surprised by Callahan's and the Doe Box connection tonight. Um, obviously, Callahan is a good quarterback, and with his wide receiver, who is D1 caliber, you'd think that they would have had a little bit more success. Maybe maybe it isn't. Maybe it's not really them. It's more the blame defense. That could be true. Those Bengals just just had really shut everything down there. I mean, Underwood's had some success, um, but not enough to really turn it into you know a, a, a cadence. So maybe I, maybe I got to give credit to defense. I think that's a good point. And I guess to further that, when the game started, Callahan was going to him. And remember, he had a few incomplete passes where it hit his hand and he didn't catch it so I guess that wasn't a good start oh. another throw there an incomplete by Callahan as under he was pressure. pressured absolutely but you can see you can see the size of number three when he lines up against other guys he does look like he's a level above um, at least he is in stature so I could see how that could be a great advantage but it, it has not really turned out to be their night I don't know what they work on next. I guess we can start looking at the schedule for the next games. And start, start thinking about who's coming up next on their schedule. But, oh, here we go. Now our quarterback for Blaine is in the 19. Goy Magic. So now we see our third quarterback in the game. Playing, allowing their other players to get some reps here, which are really valuable minutes. We've got two minutes left. They're, 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 they're going to run the clock. That last play wasn't really what they wanted, but let's see what they, how they recover from it. Hand off there and a carry by number 47. Brandon Wagner. No gain there. Third down. One yard gain. Third and twenty-two. With twenty-two at the twenty-four. So that's not too bad. If you look at the if you look at the stat sheet, um, he's he's set up. He's identified as a linebacker. So your linebacker just got you one yard. <laughs> rushing. <laughs> I was gonna say he looked like a fullback to me. So. About a minute here left. Blaine is up 56 to 20 in this non-conference matchup. Ball snapped back and handed again to Carey. But not much room there. Now at this point, they're just grinding it out. Wagner must be a guy that, that they think is not going to fumble. Hand him the ball, and then let's eat this clock up. 39 seconds left in the game. You're up 56 to 20. You do have to kick it though, I think. So we'll, that'll be the last play for Blaine. Be interesting to see if the other, if uh, the Raiders kneel it or what they do. Oh, now that now they ran the shot, now they ran the clock, and it's there's more time left on the play clock than in the game. So that's it. Blaine will receive a standing ovation. What a performance for them tonight. Yeah, and really a stunner, unfortunately, for the Raiders that's at home. Game, and that's the end of the Blaine game. Bengals, Final score, Blaine Bengals 56, Creighton Durham Hall Raiders 20. The next home game for the Raiders will be the homecoming. So that's so so now the now the Raiders go on the road. They go play Champlain Park next week, and then they'll have homecoming. So they really need to focus on getting a win in that next game, and then come home for another victory, kind of turn this around. The Bengals go to four and zero and look like a contender. That was an impressive win. I think their next game is uh, against East Ridge. 
Once again, from the University of Absolutely. Thomas, Bengals look great tonight. They started off with a ton of energy and ended with a ton of energy. And they looked really sharp. And I think you made a good point earlier about Creighton, whether they made those mistakes themselves or not, we can't overlook how great Blaine played defensively and on the offensive end. And if I'm Creighton, maybe you have to kind of put this game in the past and be ready to take on the next one because they are a great team. They just have to play like it every I, night. I mean, if you need some motivation right now, Creighton should look over. Right now there's another team. They're celebrating on your field. Exactly. And you don't want that. You definitely do not want to see that happen. But that was sol that was a solid win by Blaine. Wow. So the From start to finish, yeah. Still they're still still doing a great thing. You go over to your bench, you thank your fans for being here. Classy move. Tough to do when it's twenty to fifty six, but you still enjoy your camaraderie, you enjoy your school, you're here to represent. And then you should look over and look at those guys dancing and that's your motivation on a bad day. You look over there and say, Yep, we cannot let that happen again. Thanks for watching, comment, and, <laughs> and follow Mike on Twitter.